It's amazing to think that in 2002, the draw of nostalgia was so strong that a game featuring something so absurd as Disney and Final Fantasy working together could convince me to relive my childhood. Much to my surprise, this stunning collaboration known as Kingdom Hearts, featuring characters and worlds my mind and eyes had long associated with my adolescent best times of friends and family and even teachers. Kingdom Hearts became one of my favorite PlayStation 2 games of all time, with a sequel arriving on the Game Boy Advance a couple of years later. The then Game Boy Advance exclusive Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories began a running theme in the franchise where sequels would be released beyond consoles, with the only console entry coming after the original iteration onto the PS2 being Kingdom Hearts 2 in 2006. Kingdom Hearts 3, a game some 13 years in anticipation for those who didn't take the time to play all the smaller Kingdom Hearts entries, offered on various platforms including phones, was obviously meant to be the final chapter of a story full of more heart metaphors than zippers on a member of Organization 13's attire. Just like it was in 2002, then 2006. I powered on my PlayStation with the intent of joining the heartwarming trio of Sora, Donald Duck, and Goofy to take on heartless creatures both large and small, while other characters speak in the most winded way possible. Completing a Kingdom Hearts game has always been about filling out Jiminy's journal. Jiminy Cricket returns with a more 2019 relevant version of its old journal by giving Sora a gummy phone, featuring a checklist of all the collectibles available including playable minigames. One of the most important collectibles in the game are Lucky Emblems. Mickey Mouse shaped logos embedded into various objects across the nine main worlds that need to be photographed with the gummy phone so the player can witness the game's epilogue. The trophies and achievements are greatly associated with level grinding and collecting with nothing being missable even after the final boss encounter. Yours truly simply wanted to play out the story and see the secret ending, a goal that took me 39 hours to complete, with the intent of going back in the near future to 100% Kingdom Hearts 3. As expected with a franchise so grandiose as Kingdom Hearts, the canonical 10th entry in the series known as Kingdom Hearts 3 is full of callbacks and fan service for those who have been so painstakingly dedicated to everything that has transpired thus far. The adventures of Sora, King Mickey Mouse, Sora's old buddy Riku, the corrupted Xehanort, provide players a chance to revisit some old Disney worlds seen in previous entries, be introduced to some new Pixar created environments such as the impressive toy box based off of Toy Story, and even reach the mecca of all Keyblades by the game's final act. Though convoluted in terms of lore, the overall plot of Kingdom Hearts 3 is relatively simple as Sora attempts to regain his power of waking, all the while King Mickey and Riku search for their various friends who have been consumed by the darkness set forth by Xehanort as the villain gets closer to summoning Kingdom Hearts. For a series so rich with lore, both relatable and nonsensical, Kingdom Hearts 3's story has very little momentum beyond a few cutscenes and character interactions following the completion of the aforementioned worlds, with the rewarding story moments happening very late in the game. Like previous Kingdom Hearts games, the worlds themselves have plots that are extensive, with the intent of presenting isolated, fulfilling stories. Some are actually shortened retellings of what people have seen on the big screen, such as the Kingdom of Corona essentially being tangled with the inclusion of Sora and his friends. The stilted nature of certain world stories definitely hurts the overall narrative's flow, as stuff associated with the actual Kingdom Hearts lore feels like a forced inclusion or even unnecessary, such as 100 Acre Wood, while other worlds like the Caribbean and Monstropolis perfectly fit into the plot. The world building in Kingdom Hearts 3 wouldn't be such a mixed bag if not for the majority's size. Other than Twilight Town and the aforementioned 100 Acre Wood, all the main worlds feel grandiose and bigger than anything seen in what was offered in the previous console titles. 
with its semi-open world style. Each world is begging to be explored for collectibles, enemies, and even mini-games. The action also helps spending time in each world more entertaining, as Kingdom Hearts 3 takes from the franchise's previous entries in grand fashion. The combat originally seen in Kingdom Hearts is the basis for everything Sora does, as he can simply attack with the player tapping the strike button to pull off impressive combos that can be extended with the ability Sora gains by leveling up. By successfully attacking continuously, Sora builds up a meter that will allow for double and even triple team attacks as well as activating special weapon evolutions, specific to each Keyblade Sora earns as the story progresses. Switching between Sora's equipped Keyblades in the middle of battle to pull off dazzling environmental attacks is the best new implementation to the gameplay. Keyblades can also be leveled up via the Moogle Workshop by utilizing certain items collected, purchased, or synthesized in the game to upgrade Keyblades that will increase its stats and boost. Magic is back as the four elements usually associated with RPGs are here, including Sora's ability to cure himself and his nearby allies at the expense of his entire regenerated MP gauge. Utilizing a magical combo can produce grand magic that result in mega magic such as Flair coming from Donald and Sora. Summons also return as Link commands that too use up all of Sora's MP. Unlike the summons of old, Link attacks are controlled by the player when activated. Associated with summon attacks are the new attractions that are just as grandiose and interactive as their Link companions, but only arrive at certain moments during battle if the player is aware enough to strike an indicated enemy. These attractions are ridiculously overpowered, and with the player having a timer gauge associated with each grandiose maneuver, pulling off an attraction at the right moment can wipe out even the toughest bosses. Shot locks from Birth by Sleep come in the form of focus attacks, as the player will hold down a button that slows down time to focus on a single enemy, resulting in a spectacular attack if the player reaches max focus. Dream Drop Distance's float motion also returns here, as Sora can swing around certain poles and pillars to create a buzzsaw attack, or even spring off walls like some kind of human torpedo. There's also the Rage Transformation the player can activate when Sora reaches critical health. Though utilizing the transformation's most powerful attacks actually reduces Sora's health, that can turn an advantage into a disadvantage if the player tries to spam attacks. A majority of the enemies work just like they did in the franchise's previous entries, while newer enemies like Minotaur Heartless and the gigantic bosses that make up the conclusive battles in almost every world provide unique challenges when it comes to attack patterns. Unfortunately, gameplay issues from previous Kingdom Hearts entries are still here, including the archaic lock-on system. Utilizing the soft lock auto-targeting system is for the best, but may prove frustrating when Sora starts swinging at the enemy to his left or right, even if he's facing the adversary the player is intending to hit. The bosses themselves are mostly underwhelming outside of size, as a majority feel like just bigger versions of the various Heartless Sora must overcome in the lengthy worlds. Dodging works well, but blocking and countering can be frustrating, as the camera and unpredictable enemy patterns will leave Sora open to combos. One of the most divisive implementations to the various Kingdom Hearts games has been the usage of gummy ships. While the gummy ship creator is still incredibly deep, Actually flying and fighting with the gummy ship is completely different compared to its predecessors for all the right reasons. Traveling around various galaxies, collecting gummy points, unlocking gigantic treasures, and taking on adversarial ships in 3D action all make up the intergalactic voyages. If there's one major flaw with gummy ship travel, it's how slow the ships are without the player going out of their way to upgrade the ship. The gummy ship isn't the only moment in the game where the player will control vehicles, as the Caribbean actually provides ship battles, similar to something seen in Assassin's Creed 3 and 4, that works incredibly well. Beyond that are the great amount of things to do outside of the main story, including LCD games, some Space Invaders inspired action, and even a cooking minigame that provides meals for temporary boost in combat. Visually and sonically, Kingdom Hearts 3 is an enjoyable experience, with unique battle themes attached to each world. The graphics are so impressive that cutscenes can actually bleed into the action without any effort. Character models are fantastic for the game's majority, with standout worlds such as Toy Box. 
Kingdom Hearts 3, for all of its positives, doesn't feel like the satisfying finale to a lengthy saga, spanning 17 years due to the ambitious nature of its lore being too much for a single game to handle, especially when certain worlds the player must invest time in don't help the narrative's flow. The gameplay, thankfully, is a blast to play from beginning to end, with the graphics and audio being exceptional. It's hard to believe longtime Kingdom Hearts fans will feel hopefully satisfied with the game's narrative. But those who just want to have a good time playing a not so lengthy RPG full of stilted dialogue and some epic closing hours will forget about the plot holes and nonsense while enjoying fantastic moments like Baymax explaining what a fist bump is to Sora. With so much of the previous Kingdom Hearts games influencing this iteration, Kingdom Hearts 3 should be even more epic than it really is. With fantastic gameplay and a story that struggles to attain the same type of magic its console predecessors produced. For those who only care about the gameplay, this is the Kingdom Hearts game to play. But for gamers who enjoy RPGs for their stories, the wisest thing to do is to check out the Kingdom Hearts game compilations available on the PS4 and Xbox One before trying this one out. Thankfully for those who don't have the patience to play all the other Kingdom Hearts games, there are various narrative summaries out there to educate the player about what happened leading up to Kingdom Hearts 3. Though it may not be the classic offering people expected of it, Kingdom Hearts 3 is a mostly whimsical experience that will leave fans both new and old smiling as they find their inner princess or determine what in the world Donald Duck is really trying to say. How are we supposed to get there now? What? I thought you knew. Looks like all the old highways are closed. Didn't Master Yen Sid say that Sora should trust the guidance his heart gives? Come on, Sora! Let's roll! Um... Hey! What'd you get, Sora? Give me a break. I'm trying. These things take time. <laughs> 